Hello all. We will discuss in this session about effective nuclear charge and screening constant. How to calculate this? One important topic it is for the all entrance examinations. See, effective nuclear charge is given by Z star. Z star is equal to Z minus sigma. Z is atomic number. Sigma is called screening constant. And here, everything is important only about screening constant. That means, how to find out the screening constant, its values. For this, there are some rules given by Mr. Slater. See, screening constant is sigma and Slater's rules. What are the Slater's rules? How to calculate the screening constant? You see, first of all, we have to group the orbitals. That we call grouping of orbitals. 1s orbital. Okay, now 1s is very special. 2s, 2p orbitals are a group. Then 3s, 3p, 3d. Okay, now we are not adding 3d into 3s, 3p. 3s, 3p is separate, 3d is separate. 4s, 4p, 4d, 4f, 5s, 5p, 5d, 5f separate like that. And remember, whatever the number of electrons you are having, for example, 10 electrons, 20 electrons, 30 electrons, whatever the number of electrons in the atom. Any electron, for any electron you can find out the screening constant and you can find out the effective nuclear charge on that particular electron. The electron about which you are discussing is called a test electron. Right side to the test electron, there is no effect of that. For example, you are having 20, 30 electrons and you are discussing about the 20th electron. So after that, if 10 electrons are present, forget about those 10 electrons. Okay, now they are right side, there is no effect of that. Only left side electrons we are going to consider. In that, if your electron is present in the ns orbital or np orbital, that means the test electron, if it is present in the s, are p orbitals then to calculate the particular screening constant value you need to take 0.35 value for each electron if you are discussing only about the 1s that is hydrogen helium case then for that 1s electron this is 0.3 this is purely exception only for hydrogen helium rest there is no for all the remaining even 1s electron is there we consider 0.35 this 0.3 is exclusively for hydrogen helium forget about this exception so, NS, NP electrons, if you are calculating, then for each electron present in the NS and NP, whenever you are discussing, for each electron you are taking 0.35. Done. Then, whatever the number of electrons present in the N minus 1 level, for example, you are discussing about 4p orbital. So, 3, okay, now, four, three, N minus 1 means 3 here, 4 minus 1, 3. So, whatever the number of electrons present in the 3, third energy level, for all that we take 0 0.85. 0.85 and inner electrons n minus 2 n minus 3 n minus 4 whatever it is present just now i was saying that fourth level outer level third level is n minus 1 so second level first level whatever the number of electrons are there for each electron we take it as well 0.35 for outer electrons nth shell electrons except one okay now you for example in the outermost shell we are having six electrons you have to take only five because the six electron is your test electron Okay, so that is one. Then 0 0.85 for n minus 1 and 1 for n minus 2 levels. Then, if your electron is present in the d orbital or f orbital, okay, now this is for s and p, just now whatever we are discussing. For d orbital and f orbital, that is even easy. Okay, for whatever the electrons present in that particular d orbital or f orbital, for each electron 0 0.35, remember excluding one test electron, 0 0.35 each. Then, whatever the number of inner electrons are there, whatever the inner electrons are there, all inner electrons, no 0 0.85 term, you have to take 1. Okay, for all inner electrons, you have to take 1. But this rule is applicable only when the electron, when the test electron is present in d orbital or f orbital. If your test electron is present in S and P, then 0 0.35, 0 0.85, 1. It is for outermost, it is for n minus 1, this is for all inner. For your understanding, I am giving you some examples here. You can see lithium, electronic configuration 1s to 2s1. About this electron, I am saying this is my test electron. So, outermost, if one electron is gone, then no other electrons are there. So, 0 into 0 0.35. Then this is n minus 1 level. n minus 1 level, that's why 2 into 0 0.85. Two electrons are there into 0 0.85. So, that is 1.7. And Z star, Z star means Z minus sigma, effective nuclear charge, atomic number 3 minus 1.7 that is equals to 1.3 same thing you can see beryllium 1s to 2s2 
one electron gone, test electron, remaining one electron is there, 0 0.35 into 1. This part is same. So 2.05 is spinning constant, 1.95 is net star. So what happened lithium to beryllium? 1.3 to 1.95. Effective nuclear charge increased. Okay, now increase in effective nuclear charge decreases the radius, increases the ionization potential, increases the uh, electronegativity, increases the electron affinity, all those things you can discuss there. Okay. Beryllium to boron, 2s to 2p1. Okay, now 1s to 2s to 2p1. Outermost 3, you are taking here 2. This part is same. Okay, in the same way, carbon, 1s to 2s to 2p2. Here, 4 electrons are there. We are taking 3 because the last electron we are considering as test electron. This is a general regular thing. Okay, you can see these examples, lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen. In a period from left to right, the Z star value is increasing, you can see. 1.3, 1.95, 2.6, 3.25, 3.9. It is increasing. Okay, this point is to be noted. In a period, effective nuclear charge increases. Okay. For your understanding purpose, I gave you here one question. The effective nuclear charge and staining constant for 4s and 3d electron I need. Okay, now for 4s electron and 3d electron of zinc atom. The zinc atomic number is known to you that is 30. Electronic configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 3d10, 4s2. Two questions are here. One is about 4s electron. We need to find out Z star as well as sigma. If you find sigma, Z star is very easy. So first we will go for sigma 4s electron. 4s electron means you can see this is the electron. This is the outermost electron. S and P means 0 0.35, 0 0.85, 1. Two electrons are there. I am taking one. Okay, now one is test electron. Here, this is n minus 1 level. 2 plus 6 plus 10, 18 electrons are there. 18 into 0 0.85. These are inertial electrons. 2 plus 2 plus 6. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. 10 electrons are there into 1. Right? So, 25.65 is. Atomic number is 30, 25.65, minus if you are doing, you are getting the effective nuclear charge is 4.35. That means for 4s electron of zinc, the effective nuclear charge is 4.35. Now we will see what is the difference for d electron. For 3d electron, 3d electron means about this. Now this is the right side electron. First point when we are saying, uh, right side to test electron, no effect. So these two electrons, there is no effect. Forget about those. In d, there are 10 electrons. Yes, we need to take only 9, 0 0.35 into 9. And rest all electrons, we need to take 1. Okay, now how many electrons are there? 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 10 over, 3s2, 3p6, 8. So 10 plus 8, total 18 electrons up to here. 18 into 1. So when you add this, this is 21.15. That is screening constant. Z star, effective nuclear charge is equals to atomic number minus screening constant. That is 8.85. See the difference. For one uh, shell difference, that is 3D and 4S, the electron present in the 4S is experiencing effective nuclear charge of 4.35 and the D electron is experiencing 8.85. So 8.85 is the effective nuclear charge. You can't remove electron from this place, but you can remove electron comfortably from this place. The S electron is having very less, okay, now very less nuclear charge and here it is having more nucleus power. So, Removal of electron from here will be easy and here will be tough job. Okay. So, yes electrons, effective nuclear charge will be minimum. D electrons, effective nuclear charge will be more. For your idea, I am just giving you some uh, other elements you can see. Lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium. Okay. You just to, uh, have, have a look at this and when you are practicing, you can check the sigma values I mentioned here and scaling constant values also I mentioned. But interestingly, all they have same scaling constant 2.2, 2.2, 2.2, and 2.2. Right? Hope you understood every line. This is very important while you are explaining about the atomic radius as well as uh, ionization potential like things. Okay? Effective nuclear charge and screening constant. Right? This is your Lakshmi Reddy signing off.